It's hard to believe, but the city of Detroit has not had a Black-owned grocery store for nearly a decade. And that is going to soon change. African-American entrepreneur Raphael Wright is opening Neighborhood Grocery on the city's east side in the Jefferson Chalmers community. The full-service grocery is partially funded through a profit-sharing model that allows residents to invest in the project. Bridge Detroit's Orlando Bailey met up with Wright to talk about his desire to provide healthy food in a convenient location for Detroiters. And of course, you can't be Detroit without uh, Jermac showing up. Tell me, how does it feel to sit in a physical manifestation of something that started up here? I didn't know how to get from A to Z in doing this and to see that I'm, you know, almost at Z is a beautiful thing. Take me back to the beginning. How did all of this start? I wanted to get into community development and I wanted to get into cooperative economic models. You know, I wanted to, you know, build a business with other people. Um, you know, the bag is cheaper when a bunch of people is in it. So I wanted to share this opportunity um, and collectively build. Looking at food and community development, you know, you can't build a community without food. Mm -hmm. Grocery is an anchor for communities and um, it's, not, it's a need, it's, not a, it's, it's life or death. It's not a mechanism, it's not a gimmick. Every solvent community has food in it that will sustain you. Um, so anything outside of that is just, is, is, is moving backwards. You are getting ready to join, I think, a small elite group of Detroiters by opening a grocery store that is black owned. How long has it been? Uh, 2014 was the last black owned grocer um, in the city. Um, so it's been a long time. Um, but before that, there was a huge flight. So, you know, he was the last, you know, Metro Food Land was the, the store's name. Um, before that, we had maybe another black owned grocer. So um, for 30 some years, we only had two grocers that were of color. Talk about the need that you saw in Detroit and how Detroit got to such a place where, you know, McDonald's is more accessible, Coney Island is more accessible than a fresh food grocer. We've always just deemed it as a poor person's thing. 70% of the city of Detroit is food insecure. So that covers all the poor people and some of the folks that are affluent as well. It's not about money, it's about time. It's about experience, expertise. A lot of us don't know how to cook. So even if we bought food, we wasting it. So food waste is equally as high as food insecurity. We are in the center of many fights, civil rights and you know equal pay or just being treated the way that we're supposed to be getting treated as humans in a country that promotes that. Again, we can't do that off McDonald's. The march that we have to you know um, participate in requires you to have energy. It requires you to be healthy or at least full and whole and Coney Island is not gonna satisfy that. You know what I'm saying? You need fruits and vegetables. Talk about where the store is in relationship to where you grew up. I grew up not, you know, five minutes away from this store. This is a dream come true because we didn't think that we could be as close to water as we are, you know, growing up where I came up, you know what I mean? So being close to the water, um, being close to Gross Point, I'm in a very unique spot, you know, that I can really service Everybody. So it's like five or six varieties of tomatoes. These are heirlooms here. You have equity investors from all over. Anybody that's a Michigander can invest in this project um, with a high priority or, you know, high emphasis on being from the city or the neighborhood. So um, there's no longer just a donation element. You can also be an investor. We own this store. You know, this is our store. This is not just mine. Um, I'm just a manager. Many of these are, you know, black owned as well. You know, this is a black owned brand, a the sauce. Grains, premium barbecue sauce, sweet uh, and smoky. A healthier variety at that. You know, the ingredients are um, intentional. Give us a little bit of a preview as to what the shells will look like. Um, I'm emphasizing hyper local, mm -hmm. you know, so um, I want as many Detroit or Michigan brands on the shelves as possible. Um, because that's how you make the state strong. That's how you make the city strong, you know, and that's how we can circulate our dollars in a way that will keep us running. The name Neighborhood Grocery is a reflection of uh, my place in the area. So um, 
I want to be in the neighborhood. I don't want to be on the outskirts of the suburb, city border. I don't want to be, you know, necessarily on the main street. Um, I want to be in the neighborhood. Um, so the name is a reflection of that, you know. Um, groceries in, you know, urban cities don't have the best, you know, relationship at times, given the you know, type of grocery stores that we have. So um, I just want to put a, a, a fresh coat of paint on that reputation. Being born and raised in the city of Detroit, we often tangle with this narrative that in order to be a success, you have to escape the city. But you decided to stay in the city after high school. Why? Um, I saw the morale and just the energy of the city be sucked out. Um, but I also seen it resurrect. And that's what changed me. You know, I was straight. Let me get some money and just take care of myself. Um, but I started to see the synergy reemerge and people caring about other people. And then I started caring about other people and said, no, I need to, I, I need to stay here now. And I think that um, I would not have been able to come up with what I've come, come up with over the years if I would have left. Mm -hmm. Me staying here was the best thing that happened to me.